Okay, so hi everyone, my name is Megan and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be doing a full process video uh, from sketch to finish drawing. I don't know, I probably will speed up the line art and then sketch it because I don't talk when I sketch and I find it very hard to actually focus on what I'm doing when I'm talking or when I'm trying to think of stuff to talk about. So I'll probably just speed that up anyways. Today I'm going to be drawing on my marker paper doing my marker paper. What I'm going to be doing is drawing this. So my first step of any drawing, finished drawing that I want to do is making a thumbnail and getting ideas out there. So this was like my idea. So this is going to be one of my princess stickers. And this is Moana. Um, this is just something I drew roughly last night. So this is my first step, um, making thumbnails. So, because I think when you actually know what you're going to be doing in a drawing, it is better than going in like blind. And now we're going to move it on to marker paper. So I will go over my first few steps of drawing and how I like start my drawings. So I'm going to be using a uh, Prismacolor Cool Erase Pencil in pink. It is very short. So when I first start a drawing, I know. So there's shadows. It's from this. I thought it was for me. So when I first started drawing, I take this off. Um, I just lay down the first, like I just lay down the shapes really loosely and I don't go in with any details too soon because that's a lot of um, or that's some people's problem is that they try to go too detailed too fast so but you really want to be like rough with it and draw very lightly like you can barely tell I'm drawing anything and I'm using very sketchy lines so it can be erased because if you've ever used a like, cool erase pencil or like any color pencil in general, you'll know that they don't erase the best. Definitely not as good as like graphite. Um, so I keep them really, I keep my lines really sketchy. So she's gonna be holding something, which I don't really know what she's holding. She's holding a circle. <laughs> you can't even see this, but this is my rough sketch that I go off of. And now I start to add the details of the face because I don't know, I always like starting with the face because if the face isn't right, then the rest is not gonna be right. So. So now that I got the basic, basic um, lines down, I kind of start to go over them again, and now I'm going to start placing the lines of the hair, which Moana has kind of like wavy curly hair, so I'm trying to get really loose with it. Okay, 
so um, I just wanted to say also just remember I woke up this morning and I had over a hundred subscribers which I didn't <laughs> I don't know um yeah they kind of like took me by surprise I was like wait what <laughs> so I really just want to say thank you and, uh, I can't believe I have 100 subscribers, people watching me, maybe, I don't know, I, yeah, I, I, I don't know how many words, it's kind of amazing, so I just want to say thank you, um, shapes in I'm just gonna go in and refine some details okay so I just went in like kind of had darkened up some areas and I put some stuff on a shirt I don't really know what I'm gonna do with this shirt I looked up like a, um, a reference of like what it like from the movie um, so yeah I'm gonna just play that by ear now, the next thing I do is pick some fine liners. I don't really know what I'm gonna do for her. I'm kind of feeling like maybe like this one. I like using multiple fine liners because it just adds more like depth, I guess. I like using different colors for like the face and the hair and um, like any clothes and stuff like that. So I might, I might use this one as well. This is in brown. See my hands flipping. Um, I'll probably use, end up using that black, and I might go for if I get to find it. There it is. I might use the brown or sepia fineliner as well. Obviously, first I take in, and I'm gonna go like I'm gonna lighten the sketch, which I know kind of defeats the purpose of darkening everything. But I was just kind of. That was more for refining details. So whenever I'm doing line, I, I'm, line art, I always start with the face. Um, because, I don't know, if I mess up the face, I will seriously redo the whole drawing. Like, I mean, if it's like a really bad, if it's like a serious enough like mistake, I will redo it. I haven't really had anything that's happened too bad that I can't really fix, but I will. Like, no joke. Jackson! <gasps> Jackson, come here! Yeah, so... A little story. Back... A couple months ago, when I first was starting to get my markers, that was more than a couple months ago, that was like... <laughs> I realized I probably had to start doing line art and line art really scared me because I sucked at it like I don't know I think just like the idea of like pen scared me that I can't really like erase it not even really I can't erase it so like it would always like freak me out and I would avoid line art as much as I could and I, I wouldn't even fill in like whole spaces with line art, I would literally just like, oh, I don't even know, like I just like would do as little line art as I could, I'd basically just do like the eyes and um, like the mouth, just details that had gotten lost, because like I would draw with the cool erase pencil and then just put line art on top of that, or no, just go put the marker on top of that because uh, one of the good things about cool erase pencils and like and like colored pencils in general um, is that um, marker likes them more than graphite. Markers don't <laughs> tend to like graphite that much, so it's best if you do line art first and then and then marker. 
this. You can just use marker at the top. So like I was using a lot of cool erase pencil and just like doing line art last, which I would mess up so bad because my hands are very shaky. And when I get nervous, they get even shakier. So I would kind of freak out <laughs> whenever I had to do line art. So it just wouldn't, it wouldn't turn out very good. And it wouldn't ruin the drawing basically. And I don't really want to upset. So for a couple of days, like I would just would draw whatever like i would just draw like a face and i would just do line art on top of it which it made me a little less nervous to do it i need to switch pens a little less nervous to do line art for a little bit but still like i feel like right back into like i hated it. <laughs> gave up on that for a while and then I got into a really bad art block thing I don't know I just was not happy it was like kind of like burnout I think I had been drawing a lot and it just I felt like nothing that I was drawing was actually like turning out and I just I don't know, I just needed, I think I just needed a break, so I took a break and then I came back and I had found a few artists, like new artists, that kind of like gave me motivation, I think I talked about it in my sketchbook, I have to talk, what is that, I don't even know what that is, um, I talked about it in one of my last sketchbook tours, um, but I I found some artists that kind of helped me out and I started liking what I was doing, mainly because with line art, I just kind of stopped caring. Like if I had done this, <laughs> I would have freaked out, but I know I could probably cover it with markers somehow. If I just do the right combination of shading, <laughs> I'll not be fine. So, so like when I do line art, I kind of just think of like sketching over the lines that I have put down, which is um, really helps me. And I think my line art has improved um, a whole, a whole bunch. Um, and now I actually kind of look forward to line art because now I've actually been like experimenting with line art using different colors and I've gotten a lot more like pens like I have these plus some more upstairs and then plus like the Ohu ones like the 60 set I think just definitely help me and I don't fear liner anymore like my like I moved forward and I persevered and I didn't give up which is a message everyone should take you should not give up. Especially, like, I hate when people are like, I, I gave up. Or I hate hearing that people give up work because it's like, why? Like, I get that some people go through burnout. Like, I experience burnout, like, every day. But I know that I don't want to stop drawing. And I'm in a lot better mindset than I was over the summer because over the summer was just like it was a different time over the summer this year because usually I would not be stuck at home but I will well, I'm gonna finish the line art <laughs> and then I'll meet you upstairs where my pen where my markers are to color this okay <laughs> Okay, so I just went through and erased it. I also used the black fine liner to kind of go over certain parts. Like, I think I went over like the nostril area and I went over like the liner and just added some 
block for some variation in there. Now, I'm going to go through and pick the colors. I do have like a reference photo right here of her. Um, just to see. I really do. I really want to use this one. So we're going to use this one. Probably for like her lips or something. I'm not too sure. But for her hair, I think it's pretty dark. For her like, little necklace, I will try to just use this one though. For her shirt, I might use this one. Let's see if it's shaky. So, I don't know why it's so shaky right now. <laughs> This blue at least at first. Maybe. There we go. That one's at first. And this color I think for her eyes. I was gonna use sepia for oh, I was gonna use sepia for the necklace, but the um, I found that a really pretty color combination for a skin color. Um, is these two together. I'm gonna do this one for her skin. For her hair. It's like I want to start light just so I can build it up. So I might go like potato brown maybe. Working on marker paper, I tend to do shadows first, so um, I will lay down the shading color. So, so for in what? So for this case, it would be sepia. That's not a very good pointing tool. Yeah. Just because if you um, try to like lay down your base color and then go over with your shading color and then try to blend that out, it will kind of destroy the, um, it will kind of like pick up the um, base color, or no, the shading color. Um, so it'll kind of like destroy it basically. Um, we're gonna have um, a little technical difficulties here. Oops. <laughs> we're gonna fill my marker right now. I definitely take a um, I don't care approach when I do my marker fills. Where I just literally, I saw this somewhere, I can't remember where I saw it. But it's literally just putting the ink in the corner of the chisel nib. Like that. Like this. But I make sure not to go too fast because then it will kind of um, start leaking out the side. You know what? Like, I don't know if like, there's like a difference 
and filling it with the chisel, filling it in the chisel nib or the brush. Or I just fill it in the chisel nib. So, it yeah, is how you fill a marker. So, it's not the most efficient. I don't know, it's just like an easy way to fill a marker for me. Because I'm very lazy. I find that it's. Um, I find that that is easier than, um, taking, like, the actual chisel, or the actual nib out, I think. Um, I'm tempted to just pouring straight onto this at this point. Yeah, I barely put anything in there, so I'm not surprised. Yes, this is the sound of a dead marker. This looks like an absolute mess. Yeah, um, I'm gonna kind of do an example of like the thing I was talking about earlier with the marker paper. I can fit it here. So I'm just gonna draw like a little bit right here um, and then try to blend it out. You see how it's kind of like lifting the color? So that is why I do sh Shading color first and then blend it out. I don't know why it does that, but it does. I'm gonna have to fill my marker up more, but I'm gonna do that off camera and then I'm gonna put another layer over this just, um, <laughs> well, just to make it not look like that. So, okay, so hopefully I think I figured it out. I think it looks a little bit better. Sure, I'm just gonna continue. Um, I was filling that marker first. <laughs> like, I, I swear, I'm, I filled this marker for like five minutes. the skin and I'm moving on to the next step because I have a feeling this video is going to be as well. I don't know how much of a contrast we're gonna get between the eyes and the skin. But I guess um, I'm gonna take this color. This is like the exact same color as this.
Okay, so I just pulled this one out, this color. And I'm gonna do it. Oh, I'm gonna I think I'm gonna mix it with the colors. I'm gonna think, I'm not gonna think, I'm gonna think. Um, I'm just gonna layer it a couple times. Um, I also did grab a cool gray. And I'm going to do shaggy eyes. So what I'm going to end up doing is just coloring all the way over this with the colors. And then I'm going to go over like this part, which is way too big. And I'm just going to go over this part with like a fine gel pen or like Posca pen or something. So I'm just going to lay down this color as a flat. I think I'm gonna grab another red color. This one. This is R8. I don't know if there's like design on her shirt. I just don't know if I want to include that. I don't know. I need to do something with this. I might finish it here. I don't know. I might crop it. So it's kind of like just like a portrait. But I don't include this because like this is not my best work. But um, I'm going to take Oscar pen. make this like a print or something I'll probably cut it off but right here because mm. <laughs> like this area is kind of weird too so, so. Mm. okay yeah, so that's the finished drawing I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys later <laughs> um, again thank you so so much for uh, over 100 subscribers that's insane Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate you guys so much. I hope you guys are staying safe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!